A scientist secretly attempts to create the most advanced robot by modeling it after a girl who deeply impressed him. However, as he begins to uncover her true nature, he starts questioning his actions and things quickly spiral out of control. Before we get into this provoking sci-fi drama, where are you turning in from? A woman dangles desperately off the edge of a cliff. She lets out a scream that echoes down the wooded mountainside where a distressed little girl runs. She arrives at a house and knocks on the door. A man opens and is surprised to see her. He asks her where her mother is, but before she can respond, she suddenly faints. A plane lands in a small airport. Alex, a cybernetic engineer, emerges with a pet robot following at his heels. His brother David is there to meet him. It's been 10 years since they last saw each other and the two catch up as they drive into town. David has grown bored of designing robots and is now a lecturer. He invites Alex to stay at his home, but his brother declines and prefers to stay at their dad's old house instead. They drive through the campus grounds and David drops Alex off at one of the buildings and invites him to come over for dinner the following night. Alex arrives at a reception desk where a robot assistant informs him that the person he's looking for, Julia, is still busy. She protests when Alex walks on past her, but he ignores her and proceeds to the laboratory room where several students are about to begin a test. Julia, Alex's old mentor, finishes giving instructions and notices him. She comes over to greet him. He gets distracted by a pair of students whose robot horse is in distress. The two get more nervous as he approaches their table. He adjusts a dial on the machine and the robot calms down. The student apologizes and Alex asks him what he should do now. The student leans closer to the robot horse and whispers, What do you see when you close your eyes? The robot stops prancing, raises its front legs, then falls dead on its side. Alex tells him that he has now broken it. The partner says they could restart it and reinsert its bases. Alex agrees it can be restarted, but points out that they've destroyed its emotional memory, its soul. It may look like the same horse when they restart it, but it will never be the same again. Julia has been observing this and now speaks up to the whole class. She explains that what do you see when you close your eyes is a sacred command and must only be used in extreme cases when there's no other option. She then leads Alex to a different laboratory. On a table in a back room lies a robot, SI9, that looks strikingly like a real boy. Julia reveals that it has been finished and assembled according to Alex's designs 10 years ago. However, it's missing the most important part emotional intelligence software. He accepts the project but says he'll work at his dad's old house and Julia agrees. They walk together to the parking lot and Alex notices a group of students in the distance, along with a lecturer he recognizes. She catches him watching and for a moment their eyes meet, then he looks away and gets in the car. At the house, Julia tells Alex that nobody has been there since his father died. He wanders over to the table and wall lined with photographs. There are several of him with David as boys, and there's also one of David and Lana, the lecturer he just saw from the parking lot. Lana, his old lover, is now David's wife. Alex and Julia proceed to a spacious room with a lofty ceiling and skylight, and she asks him if he really wants to stay there. He remarks that it's only a bit of dust and she laughs, and says she'll have the equipment installed the following day. However, he has to agree to go to the university to help choose the child to base the android on. The following morning, Alex is woken by a knock on the door. It's Max, an SI7 android helper, sent from the university to help him with housework. Alex tries to dismiss him, but he lets himself inside and declares the mess a level 5. He sees Alex's robot cat, Grizz, and expresses his dislike for it. He encourages Alex to relax and recommends coffee and a walk then goes to the kitchen and efficiently fixes a cup of coffee. He even recognizes the checkmate with hardly a glance at the chessboard beside the tray. Alex remarks that he has a lot of skills, and Max replies that he was created by David's team and was designed for a wide range of tasks and can speak 29 languages. He pushes Alex to go for that walk, and Alex finally leaves. He drives to the university where he and Julia watch videos of children put through a delayed gratification test using sweets but he thinks they're all boring. He asserts that with an ordinary child, you'll get an ordinary robot. Then he takes some sweets and leaves. 
but instead of exiting the building, he decides to check in on Lana. He slips inside her lecture hall and the bell rings. The students file out, leaving him alone with her. They have a quick chat, then she announces she has a meeting to attend. Alex drives past a school and observes the children. Part of the sidewalk has a large signboard blocking his view, but he sees someone's legs up in the air, moving forward as they walk with their hands. It piques his interest. A little girl gets up and prances down the path. He drives slowly alongside, observing her. She notices and asks him what he's looking at. It kicks off a lively exchange, and the little girl displays a lot of wit, even playfully calling him a pervert. She walks away and he hurriedly gets out to go after her and continue the conversation. She tells him her name is Eva and he gives her some of the sweets he took. He explains that he works at the university and he's creating a robot. He asks her to work with him if she's interested and if her parents allow her to, but she says she has to go home and skips away. Alex returns home to find the house spick and span and Max has just finished cooking lunch. As he serves Alex, Max informs him that the university technicians have dropped off the equipment, including a complete prototype. Alex commends him for the delicious food, and the android is pleased and reports that he also made a basket for Grizz. However, Grizz doesn't stay in the basket and prefers to be on the couch. Max suggests that Grizz must be faulty and needs to be repaired, but Alex responds that Grizz is a free robot and doesn't meet some of the safety requirements. So Max tries to get along with Grizz, but gets frustrated. Alex asks him what emo level he's on. He's a standard level 8. Alex tells him that he and Grizz are not used to such emotional robots and asks him to take it down to level 6. Later on, Alex gets to work on the equipment. He adjusts the different configurations in the processor and powers up the prototype. The robot comes to life and explores the world around him while Alex observes and takes notes. The android boy displays some emotions, a deep curiosity, and the capacity to learn. He's fascinated by the smoke from a cigarette in the ashtray, and Alex teaches him the word for it. He repeats after Alex. However, the phone suddenly rings, frightening him. David is calling to invite Alex for dinner. Alex tries to decline, but David won't take no for an answer and tells him to be there at 9, then hangs up. Alex sighs in defeat and then attends to the robot on the floor, overcome with fear. He notes down this new emotion and then powers him down. Alex arrives at David and Lana's home. David welcomes him warmly while his exchange of greetings with Lana has a slight hint of awkwardness, but the three have a lively conversation. Suddenly, the little girl, Ava, walks into the room and asks what's for dinner. Alex is in shock as David introduces him to her as Uncle Alex. Ava shakes his hand and says, nice to meet you, with a wink before Lana leads her away to the kitchen. Alex finally finds his voice and tells David he's happy for him and the two brothers embrace. They all have a pleasant dinner. At one point, Alex films the young family's playful interaction and reviews the video later at home. Max sees it and questions whether the girl isn't too wacky to be the model for a robot. Alex agrees that she's wacky but explains that he's looking for a fun model. The following morning, Alex is woken by a noise. It's Ava throwing pebbles at the skylight. He lets her in. While he gets on with work, she explores the room and is fascinated by the equipment. Max arrives and is surprised to see her. He goes out of his way to make her feel at home and is horrified when Grizz jumps onto her lap. He quickly scolds the robot cat, but Ava assures him she doesn't mind. He then remembers to introduce himself to Ava, who in turn introduces herself to the android helper. Then the two have a silly laugh, off with Ava going overboard, leaving Max baffled. Alex suddenly gets an idea and asks Eva to play a game. It turns out to be an emotion recognition test. She gets tired of it and tells Alex it's a waste of time. He explains that her reactions help him configure the robot's emotional memory, and she replies that it will be one boring robot. They argue over an image of a man in tears, as Ava can't understand the concept of tears of joy. Alex is amused at her stubbornness and creative mind, but she gets upset and tells him not to laugh at her. She demands he open the door so she can leave. He does as she asks, but says he won't follow her. A few moments later, she knocks and he lets her in again. She presents her conditions to him. She's willing to help, but he has to show her the robot, and he agrees. 
He sets up the processor and explains the different components to her, then he powers up the robot. That night, while Lana gives her a bath, Eva confesses that she went to see Alex. Lana makes her promise not to do it again, and she promises but crosses her fingers. She asks her mom why she never speaks about Alex, and Lana gives her a little background about why she and David were upset when Alex left. Eva then pointedly asks her if she loved Alex the way she loved her dad. Lana gives her a vague reply and playfully dunks her in the water. The following day, Alex visits Julia and proposes the robot be a girl instead. She firmly tells him that SI9 is a boy and they just need his emotional reaction program. He argues that boys are clumsy and boring, while girls are sweeter, more mature, more sensitive and prettier. But Julia counters that they're also more perverse, more jealous and twisted and tells him to get back to work. As Alex walks out of the building, the bell rings. He goes to see Lana again and they walk together. They banter for a while before Lana confronts him about the tests he did with Ava. She tells him she'd rather he not do them with her, as she would like her daughter to just do what little girls do. He apologizes and explains that he did it because Ava is a special girl. Lana playfully asks him what he expects when Ava is her daughter. Just then a car pulls up ahead and David gets out. Lana says goodbye to Alex as David gives him a wave. He watches Lana and David kiss each other in greeting before walking away. The following day, Alex is on his way out when Eva surprises him. He explains that they can't continue working together because her parents don't want her to and he gets inside his car. But Ava insists that she wants to do it and he needs her. But he dismisses her, saying there are other kids. She counters that there aren't any like her and reminds him that with an ordinary kid, he'll get an ordinary robot. She climbs on top of the car when he refuses to open the door and says it's too bad he won't let her in as she wanted to tell him the story of David and Lana. He can't resist. He agrees to do unofficial tests and just observe her while she has fun. They go ice skating together while they do some verbal tests. She then brings him up a mountainside overlooking the town and points out where her house is. Then she points to another house on the far side and tells him it's David's house. Alex is surprised and asks if David doesn't live with them, and she shakes her head. Back home, Alex plays footage of Eva and SI9, asks if she's his daughter. Alex says she isn't, and SI9 remarks that she looks a lot like him, which gets Alex thinking. He goes to Eva's home and observes her playing with Lana in the yard. She sees him and looks past him before abruptly turning away and running off. David suddenly comes up from behind and greets him. Alex explains that he came to see if David was home, but he declines when he's invited in for a drink. He insists he has to go, but not before David has convinced him to attend the graduation party. Back home, Alex works with SI9 on the emotion recognition test. They argue about one of the photos. Alex is also amused at his reasoning, and the android boy gets upset and tells him not to laugh at him. He throws a tantrum and becomes aggressive. He repeatedly demands that Alex open the door so he can leave, but Alex orders him to sit down. They go back and forth on this until the SI9 sees a wood chisel in a toolbox nearby and throws it at Alex. It narrowly misses him and gets lodged in the post beside him. He's left with no choice but to say the words, what do you see when you close your eyes? The SI9 immediately collapses and the different components in the processor die out in miniature explosions. Max comes in and asks what happened, but Alex is too upset to deal with him. At the graduation party, Alex arrives and runs into Lana, but David is close behind and the husband and wife take to the dance floor. Alex feels glum and downs a glass of champagne before heading for the door, but he changes his mind and makes his way to the dance floor. He asks for a turn with Lana. David graciously steps aside but quickly grows jealous as he watches them. After dancing with Alex for a while, Lana comes to her senses and looks around for David, but he's nowhere to be seen. She asks Alex to help her find him and they head out together. After walking for some time, they stop by the roadside and talk. Alex asks if she's forgiven him since it's already been 10 years, but she responds that she'd need another 10. He moves in closer and kisses her, but she pulls back and tells him that she can't do it before running off. Alex watches her go and suddenly, David comes up from behind and punches him. The two men brawl in the snow and David gains the upper hand 
but stops himself from seriously hurting Alex and just tells him to go away. Alex returns home and cleans himself up. Max asks him if he needs anything and he asks the android to turn his emo level back up to 8. After the setting has been activated, Max asks Alex what's wrong and he says it's nothing, but as he walks away, the android stops him and gives him a comforting hug which he appreciates. Alex visits Julia and informs her that he won't be finishing the SI9. She expresses her disappointment at what a great creator he is, but he never completes his projects. She encourages him to take some time off first before they talk again. As he gets up to leave, she asks if it's because of Lana, and he doesn't reply, but his expression confirms it. Alex's next stop is Ava's house. He finds her playing alone in the yard. He asks why she lied to him about David not living with them and she responds that it's because he wanted to hear it. He tells her that he's leaving, and she gets upset and runs off. Alex goes back home and begins packing. Lana unexpectedly walks in and apologizes for what happened the previous night. He asks her if she wants him to leave, and she admits she doesn't. They kiss, then she says she has to tell him something. At the same time, Eva arrives outside. She looks in through the skylight and sees them. She reads Lana's lips as she talks to Alex and perfectly makes out the words. Ava is a very special little girl. She is like us both because we made her. Ava is shocked as the meaning of this hits her. She unintentionally makes a noise on the glass, causing Lana and Alex to look up and see her before she runs off. Lana tells Alex that she has to tell Ava herself and chases after her without him. She goes up a mountainside and activates a tracking device that gives off a distress signal and she follows it to where Eva is lying unconscious in the snow. She carefully cuts out the skin on her back to reveal a metal panel. She opens it and replaces a small vial of fluid. When the panel closes, Eva powers up again. She jumps into Lana's arms and the two embrace. Eva has no memory and asks Lana what happened. Lana guarantees her that everything is okay, but she feels the blood on her back and gets worked up. She starts backing away while demanding to know what she is. Lana reassures her that she's her little girl and tries to hold on to her coat to keep her from getting away. But Ava shoves her and she falls to the ground and slides down to the edge of the cliff. She holds on, but not for long, and she screams as she falls to the ground far below. Back at the house, Alex has dozed off and is woken up by a knock on the door. He finds Eva there and asks her where her mother is but she suddenly faints. After nightfall, Alex gets a call from David, and he and Ava rush to the hospital. They arrive just as Lana has been pronounced dead. The following morning, Max approaches Eva and asks if something bad happened as Alex is very upset. She confesses that she pushed Lana and starts to cry. Max picks her up in his arms. He carries her indoors and tucks her in on the couch before going to Alex and revealing what she had said. Julia comes to see Alex and explains that Lana continued the project after he left 10 years ago. She was the first to design the SI-9, Eva. However, Eva didn't pass the safety controls, but Lana wanted to keep her and gave up everything for her, and Julia now regrets allowing her to. She tells Alex that they have to destroy Eva, and he is horrified and tries to reason with her, but she points out that Eva killed Lana. He realizes there's no other outcome and decides to be the one to do it. Julia says it's her responsibility, but he insists and she gives in. He sits at the table smoking a cigarette while waiting for Ava to wake up. When she finally does, he asks her if they can go ice skating again. This time they go with Max, and Eva tries to teach the android how to skate while Alex watches from a distance. David soon joins him. The brothers say nothing to each other but cry and hug, and then David leaves. Ava calls Alex to join them, and he goes up to her. They embrace and talk. She asks him to promise he'll help her because she doesn't want to be bad again. He says nothing and just holds her. They go off for a walk alone. When they get home that evening, Max announces that dinner is ready, but Alex just leads Ava to the workroom and shuts the door. Inside, Alex turns off all the equipment as Ava watches him suspiciously. She goes to the bed and lays down. They talk about a bedtime story Lana used to tell her. Then she suddenly asks Alex whether he intends to fix her, but there is resignation in her voice. He doesn't say anything, and they both embrace each other and cry. Then Alex finally asks her 
What do you see when you close your eyes? And she falls back lifeless as he catches her and lays her down gently. What she sees when she closes her eyes is a paradise with her mother, Lana, and Alex as her father, all together with her, playing forever. If you had the chance to design a robot with emotions, would you create it to feel pain and loss, or would you shield it from those experiences? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.